Oh, well, hello there. My name is Mason, and today we're we'll telling you the life and legacy of St. Ignatius of Loyola, one of the most famous Jesuits of all time and the founder of the Society of Jesus. Let's start with the beginning, shall we? St. Ignatius was born October 23rd, 1491, in Loyola, Spain. In October, St. Ignatius was born in Castle Loyola, in Loyola, Spain. Castle kind of like this one. As a child, St. Ignatius loved to read. He liked to read books about chivalry and romance. In his castle, the only books he had growing up were books about the life of the saints and the life of Christ. As he read the stories of the saints, he felt inspired to do the same good actions that they did, and he somewhat related to them. He could see himself in their shoes, performing the same good deeds as they were, and, he, and as he did this, he felt a contentment in his heart. Hey, Ignatius, what are you doing? Oh, I love to dance. As a child, St. Ignatius loved to dance. I guess that was his way of getting his energy out. Hi, I'm Magdalene, St. Ignatius' sister-in-law. Man, she is beautiful. A little known fact about St. Ignatius is that he had a huge crush on his sister-in-law, Magdalene. Sometimes, his crush on Magdalene even interfered with his prayer and distracted him. This goes to show that even saints are human too. Hey, what kind of clothes are you looking at? Oh, just something to add to my collection. St. Ignatius was very into fashion. He loved to dress lavishly and had a profound collection of clothes. He was always in his wardrobe, looking for new ways to maybe impress Magdalene with the kind of clothes he was wearing. Another lesser known fact is that there is an annual St. Ignatius children's fashion show that still goes on to this day. Wait a minute, this guy looks familiar. Hey sir, I'm gonna enlist for the army. All right. Uh -huh. Where are you going, infantry? Uh, I believe so, yeah. My name is uh, Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius of Loyola, what a name. All right, well, here's your weapon. I'm glad you are able to join us. Thank you, man. In 1508, St. Ignatius made the decision to enlist in the military. He served in the Peninsular Army as an infantryman and was on the front lines of battle. This decision would forever change the course of Ignatius's life. I am the general of the Peninsular Army. Here, we will be defending Fort Pamplona from the French, a territory that is rightfully ours. The year is 1521, and St. Ignatius is about to embark on the biggest battle of his life. Ignatius was a fierce warrior and fought with courage. But oh no, incoming! Oh, oh, my 
my leg. My leg. At the ripe age of 30, Ignatius was hit by a cannonball. It shattered one of his legs and broke the other one, leaving him incapacitated. This, unfortunately, would end St. Ignatius' military career and serve as a turning point in his life in which he decided to dedicate his life fully to Jesus. This is where Ignatius started to become a saint. Go. Oh, man, dude. My leg is not getting any better. And after that surgeon messed it up the first time, I don't think it ever will. St. Ignatius ended up spending nine months in convalescence. During this time, he read devotional books that changed his outlook on life. He decided that the material world wasn't all for him and that his military career wasn't nearly as meaningful as the life lived for Christ. Here, St. Ignatius did what he could to get closer and closer to God. This relationship would further escalate and he would soon form the Society of Jesus. Oh, Ignatius, you're walking again. Oh yeah, got a little better. The year is 1523. Ignatius left Barcelona and traveling by way of Rome, Venice and Cyprus, reached Jerusalem on September 4th. He would have liked to have settled permanently, but the Franciscan custodians of the shrines of the Latin church would not listen to this plan. Ignatius crisscrossed Europe, walking back and forth through Spain, France, and Italy. He wandered further by boat, sailing from Venice to the Holy Land. Eventually, he took the name Ignatius, which is how we now refer to him. But in his memoir, he preferred to call himself simply the Pilgrim. Hey, you're in school now. Yeah, actually, I enrolled in the University of Paris. Saint Ignatius enrolled in the University of Paris in 1534, which is pretty ironic considering he got injured by a French cannonball. The injury still kind of haunts him to this day. Anyways, back to the main point. It was here at the University of Paris that Ignatius would find the five other original founders of the Society of Jesus. The Society of Jesus, or now, now known as the Jesuits, was a Catholic education and missionary effort the Jesuits established numerous schools and universities throughout Europe, helping maintain the relevance of the Catholic Church in an increasingly secular and Protestant society. One of the main objectives of these Jesuit works was to support the Counter-Reformation. This guy Martin Luther, man, he was causing a lot of trouble. In 1548, St. Ignatius published his spiritual exercises. The spiritual exercises were about living based off of Ignatian values through the charism of Ignatian spirituality to serve Christ in the world using Ignatius' tools, including prayer, contemplation, spiritual direction, discernment, and the daily examination of your consciousness. These spiritual exercises include cura personalis, the view that each person is its own unique creation of God, discernment, encouraging students to be open to God's spirit as they make decisions and take action that contribute to the greater good, finding God in all things. A Jesuit education is one grounded in the presence of God and encompasses imagination, emotion, and intellect finding God in all things, even the places where you least expect it. Magis, Latin for more, a commitment to the concept that there is always more to be done and challenges students to go beyond what is expected. Reflection is also a foundational value of Jesuit education and Ignatius' spiritual exercises. Students are invited to 
pause and consider the world around them and their place within it before making decisions. Ignatius believed in service rooted in justice and love. This encourages critical awareness of the social and personal evil, but points out that God's love is more powerful. And lastly, solidarity and kinship. Students work together for the greater good. They develop relationships with their surrounding communities and share their talents and skills to help serve others. Hi, I'm Jake Daly. I have been narrating this whole thing up until now. In case you're wondering where St. Ignatius is, he died of malaria in 1556. Thankfully, his legacy will still live on. In 1540, the Society of Jesus was officially canonized by the Pope as an official Christian denomination. In 1622, St. Ignatius was officially recognized as a saint. His impact is still seen today, as Jesuit education has taken roots in America and other parts of Europe, and even internationally in the adventures of China and the other areas in Asia. Now, that is all. Thank you for watching.